The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to the Lord. When Jesus came to the territory of the Gadrazines, two demoniacs were coming from the tombs and met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Some distance away, a herd of many swine were feeding. The demons pleaded with him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. Jesus said to them, That go then. They came out and entered the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned. The swine herds ran away, and when they came to the town, they reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, on the popularity meter, which reading do you prefer today? (laughs) Today are the optional memorials for St. Elizabeth of Portugal and St. Anthony Zacharia. Uh, So we really honestly just give them an honorable mention. Um, uh, St. Anthony, this particular Anthony, was the founder of a religious order given to preaching and love of the Eucharist. Elizabeth of Portugal was the great niece, was it, of Elizabeth of Hungary, Uh, came from a royal family, etc., endured many trials and tribulations, uh, took on the third order of St. Francis in her love and care for the poor. Today might be a good example of how God deals with very difficult circumstances. They're intriguing stories, and sometimes you probably want to scratch your head and say, really, did that happen? Is it hard for God to do difficult things? You know, i got to say no. It's a difficult circumstance. You can understand Sarah because of the jealousy, the tension, the resentment between she and um, Hagar, because she herself said, no, no, you know, you know, you deserve kids, you know, so go ahead and take my servant and, and raise up a child to her. But then when she had her own child, we can understand, we can accept, or we can see, that God understands human psychology. It also tells us that Sarah was as human as you and I. I don't recall any particular time when Abraham was shown to have been um, something less than virtuous. He's known as the righteous one, which is why we call him our father of faith, our ancestor of faith. Sarah shows her humanity so normal that she would feel jealousy and resentment and probably great bitterness. No inheritance of mine will be shared with that half-breed kid that my husband had, you know, etc. You can, you can understand that. You can also understand that the trauma and terror of Hagar, of having to watch her son die of thirst, which you can only imagine to be a long, painful death, How many times have you yourself been frustrated trying to find something that was right in front of you and you couldn't see it? You know what I mean? And after all this reading, then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. It's like, duh, like, why didn't you see it before? 
because she's so traumatized and probably herself resentful and bitter given her circumstance. Maybe she's feeling guilt and shame and she's real sorry now that she really uh, picked on Sarah so badly. But the point would be that God cares for her. God's solving a very painful and difficult problem. So if you have a painful and difficult problem that you have no idea is going to be resolved, maybe we can take the position of the young boy. It's not an infant because it says that, arise, lift up the boy, and hold him by the hand, which implies that he's big enough to have his hand held and he can walk. That's not a baby. God solves a painful and difficult problem and makes a promise that she too, through Ishmael, Ishmael will be the father of a great people. That's a different story. Keep that in mind. When you find yourself at wit's end and you have a problem you can't solve by yourself, <laughs> we always need a lot of help, like the fishermen who had ever caught any fish except when Jesus was around. And the painful, equally painful story of the Gadradines. Now here in Matthew's gospel, we have two demoniacs. On the one hand, the fact that it's in all of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But here there's two. But the rest of the story is the same. It's a difficult problem. On the one hand, you'd have to say, as uh, suggested in the Word Among Us today, the people of that town must have been very happy to get the road back. They must have been at least pleased that these two demoniacs were freed. And yet, were they really free? Would they become possessed again? Are they safe to be around? Clearly, they were traumatized by the loss of a prominent part of their economy, not to mention their food. And then, in their fear, Despite all the pros and, and benefits that came to them, their road and the demoniacs were freed and delivered, they want Jesus to leave, just in case his power in some way might be used against them, perhaps. God knows how to solve very difficult problems. God heard, as is said, or we just heard in the psalm, God hears the cry of the poor. We are all the poor of God. Today we're using the votive mass for those in captivity. Not the same as those who are being persecuted, not the same as those who are being oppressed. In captivity. Both of these circumstances refer that the folks are captive. Hey, uh, Sarah is captivated or in captivity of her anger, resentment, and bitterness a jealousy against Hagar. Hagar is in the captivity of her fear and trauma at the fear that her son would die of thirst and then probably herself. And the people of the Gadradines were in the captivity of their own fear. The two demoniacs were captive by evil. God resolved it all. Now I suppose from the humor department, Jesus was Jewish. He didn't like pigs anyway. And so they got run into the sea. God solves difficult problems. Allow yourself to be poor and cry out, and God will hear.